Black Panther is the 18th installment already to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it is directed by Ryan Krugler, who previously directed the excellent Rocky spin-off film Creed. So naturally, I was excited, and it gave me great interest to see what he can take into a superhero movie. This is also the first ever film on the big screen to ever have a leading black superhero and have such a dominant African-American cast. As a result, I was extremely excited because this film may be very unique and maybe more than just another Marvel superhero film. The film focuses on Chadwick Boseman's Black Panther slash T'Challa character who after the death of his father in Captain America Civil War returns home to the African nation of Wakanda, where he is about to step in his father's shoes as a new king. However, when some precious vibranium, which is an important source in the nation, was stolen to create highly advanced technology, and when a powerful new enemy arises, the Black Panther is drawn into conflict where the fate of the nation and the world will be at risk. The Marvel Cinematic Universe has been consistent overall in terms to an entertainment value and at the box office for certain, and apparently building a strain of cinematic universes is now Hollywood's fastest way of making money. Although there is no denying that these superhero films are all very enjoyable, and I always left with a smile on my face, there was never one that I found to be thematic and truly thought-provoking. I always considered Captain America The Winter Soldier as the best Marvel film to date because The Winter Soldier had a largely realistic tone and the central theme was about trust and it felt very much like I was watching a spy thriller. Still, no superhero film has ever met the expectations set by Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. The level of realism and the way it transcends the superhero genre has set a leading example for not just superhero films, but for new benchmark filmmaking standards as well. The free films just could not be beat. Which led me to asking myself these questions. 1. Is it really challenging to make a superhero film great? 2. Are people just not trying hard enough to make a good superhero film? And finally, 3. Is the Dark Knight Trilogy really the only outstanding superhero franchise that cinema could produce? Weeks before its release, I heard some very positive reactions towards Black Panther online, with critics lauding it as one of the best Marvel films to date, and that there was a 98% score on the review website Rotten Tomatoes. There may be some hope, I thought. Maybe this can change all of my previous opinions regarding to superhero films. However, as far as I'm excited, I forced myself not to read any reviews until I have seen the film, so that I'm not drawn into having too many expectations, because you know, too many expectations may result in disappointments. Therefore, I chose to remain neutral and hopefully let the screen surprise me with its thrills. And I wished it could have done a little bit better. It was a bit disappointing. Nevertheless, there were elements in the film that amazed me. As always, every Marvel film contains that sense of humor regardless whether the film is trying to be serious or not. And this film is no different. In addition, the film sees the best use of cinematography in Marvel history. The uninterrupted tracking shots and highly choreographed action scenes, instead of using multiple cuts, help maintain the excitement and the breathtaking landscape shots over Wakanda, particularly the opening sequences, really help elevate the nation's status, and it blew my mind straight off the bat. Furthermore, the action scenes were some of the best that I have seen in a Marvel film, particularly the car chase sequences in Korea, which had a lot of fun and momentum. 
The visual effects were staggering, and even though most of them are utilized with computer-generated imagery, still, it did not affect my appreciation towards it. Furthermore, it did not feel too much like a superhero film, which helps break the boundaries of the genre, and also, I didn't have this feeling where you would constantly wait for Black Panther to be in his suit and fighting, which is good, because this shows that it makes us care more about himself as a character, and like what Nolan did with his Dark Knight trilogy, it made us care more about the man behind the mask instead of just his costumed identity. What I like most about this superhero is that he's not arrogant and carries this extra persona like Tony Stark per se. Instead, he's humble, charismatic, and has and he has this sense where being a hero and a king is a responsibility, which is also the primary theme in this film. Most importantly, the film emphasizes the significance of black people, which is what the film deserves credit for. The film portrays Africa as the most technologically advanced nation in the world and shows that even black people can too be strong. Therefore, the film manages to challenge our stereotypes regarding how most people used to consider them as weak or useless. Black people can therefore look up towards this film and feel proud of who they are while white people can understand this, their significance. See, this is the film that we need. We need people from different cultures to understand each other instead of sticking to our racial stereotypes and beliefs, we really need to learn to accept and praise each other. Unfortunately, the issue that I had with this film is that it's too dialogue heavy. Therefore, at times, it really just challenges your patience, and I think some Marvel fans may be disappointed with this aspect of the film. But I think what separates this film from other Marvel films is that it is a more dialogue driven story rather than simply just another action spectacle. This element however may not be everyone's cup of tea as most fans would be expecting another dazzling extravaganza rather than this complex dialogue. Some may consider it to be the most boring Marvel movies to date which is understandable. But this is not just your average Marvel film. It had many good intentions to be something else, despite its shortcomings. Now, I'm going to discuss some minor details of the plot. It's not going to reveal much, and it's not really a spoiler, but in case you don't want to hear it, you can skip the next 60 seconds. So, according to the trailers, it was marketed as if Andy Serkis's claw was going to be one of the major villains in the film. My impression was that he appeared to be quite menacing and interesting. Therefore, I thought this may be a more exceptional and layered Marvel villain. But in fact, Michael B. Jordan's Killmonger was the main villain instead. And I felt misled by the trailers because Claw did not do much in the film and he just dies halfway through the movie. Maybe I just wasn't paying close enough attention to the trailers. But really, it's about what's in store that matters. Black Panther is not a cinematic breakthrough of any kind. At least not as good as critics said it was going to be. But I loved the way its filmmakers approached the film as it does not feel like it's another setup film or any kind because it is a unique standalone and self-contained piece of work and has a major social significance towards the society that we live in despite its flaws. These were the techniques and elements that Christopher Nolan used in his trilogy and they were the reason why the franchise was so epic. Yes. I have not seen a superhero film that manages to break any boundaries yet, but I'm sure if Marvel continues to apply this concept where they start focusing on making more unique standalone films rather than just rushing to set up future installments and making money, 
cinema will just progress towards the next level. Overall, this film deserves a view, and I'm going to award it an A-. If you really want to watch this movie, I suggest you not to wait for it to be released on DVD or simply just choose to be a computer nerd by checking it online. But instead, visit the theater to view this film because then you get to absorb the vibrant and intense movements of every shot and I guarantee you will expect a better, stunning visual experience.